This is Berina Ago, and we are in the video serials Berina Travels in Quarantine. Today we are virtually traveling to Germany with Kate Johnson, an American who loves yoga, nature and horses. Thank you for being my precious guest, Kate. How are you and where are you now? Thank you very much, Berina. I am so pleased to see you again. Um, I'm living in Hertgenwalde of Germany. It's a rural area close to the Belgian border, not far from the historical town of Aachen, and not too far away from Cologne, from Cologne. It's very, very beautiful here. How it happened that you are living there? I am married to the most wonderful man in the world, who is German and has deep roots in this area. His grandfather actually built a hunting house um, just a mile away from where we're living now. Hertgenwald has a very tragic history. During World War II, it was the scene of some of the fiercest fighting in the last part of World War II. The entire area, including beautiful forests, were completely devastated. My husband's family had their hunting house not far from here during the war. It was the hospital for both the Allied and the German forces. So he and his family continued to come back to this area after World War II, helped rebuild the area, and now he's an elected official with the local government and is um, doing things to help the environment and help reclaim the land. It's really very beautiful, the work that he's doing. What an inspiring story. Thank you for sharing. But can you tell us which is the most beautiful place that we should visit there? Well, you should come and visit me <laughs> because our house is not far from the beautiful forested area. And then we can go on long walks through the forest. The most beautiful thing here are the woods and the forest and nature and the trees. It is extraordinary. However, I will tell you, and I'm sad to say, I'm putting this on my Facebook page, because of global warning, warming, um, so many of the trees have, have died. Um, there's a small beetle that thrives when the trees are not getting enough water. And the past several summers have been very hot and very dry, unusual as a result of global warming. So my cry to the world is, please, let us do everything that we can to preserve our earth, to preserve nature. It is such a beautiful gift of the earth that we have been given. And we're seeing global warming everywhere, but here in the forest as well. So there are still some beautiful parts of the forest that we can go and walk in. Um, they're still there, and we're reclaiming and replanting the trees that have died powerful of messages about nature and environment protection. How has your life changed due to coronavirus? We, as everybody else, are restricted in our movements. We had planned a visit to our daughter who lives and is in university in England. We had to cancel the plans, very sadly. Um, we had planned a trip for our son and our granddaughter to come here and visit in August. Unfortunately, that will probably also be canceled. Um, we, as everyone else, are just having to hunker down. Um, but the good thing that's happening in that is that we get in touch with the values that are deepest to us. Family, friends, sharing good things, good things together, even remotely on the internet. So it's a difficult time, but we are blessed to be in a home where we can get out in nature and we have the internet um, and good food. We, we haven't run out of things, so it, we've been very, very blessed. What is your biggest passion in life? Tell us a bit of your motto, live well. Ayurveda teaches that wellness comes from within. And my desire with the Center for the Healing Arts, which I have launched here in the last year in Hertgenwald, is to work with women to help women find that inner healing themselves through natural means of Ayurveda, of yoga, 
of contemplative prayer and meditation, um, things that are available to all of us, stretching, walking, moving, breathing the air, um, those are the things that are really important to me and that help all of us heal. What has been your most deep experience in traveling? Well, Ms. Blerina, it was actually with you <laughs> when you led us in a mule trip to the top of the sacred mountain, Tomor, outside of Berat in Albania. That was one of the most incredible and memorable experiences I have ever had. I had never ridden a mule before, and the mule was, she was so sure-footed, she was so amazing. Coming down the mountain, then I actually had to close my eyes a couple of times because things were so steep and I was so frightened. And that mule knew exactly where to put her feet. It was, she was sure-footed, we were absolutely safe, but it was amazing. And you, Blerina, were in front, and I've never seen anybody do this. They're on this dangerous trail. What do you do? You turn around and ride your mule backwards so that you could see me and make sure I was okay. <laughs> well, I'm glad. Incredible. It was just amazing. I'm glad to hear that uh, Albania has been one of the, your most amazing experiences. And uh, I I still remember the amazing day that we spent together in the, the holy mountain of Tomor. I also uh, learned a, a lot of things about you, about the energy, spiritualism, how to enjoy better the nature. So thank you for being my guest. You have recently taken a long hiking adventure. Can you talk uh, more about it? Yes, the Camino de Santiago and my dear friend who is here, Eileen Bouget, um, and her very close friend as well, Misha, also walked the Camino. They walked the entire nearly 1,000 kilometers. I only walked 200 kilometers of it, but I did walk over the Pyrenees Mountains alone, and I'm glad to tell you that my 66 year old knees made it up and down with no problem I'm sure because of all the yoga all the power yoga that I learned in Albania um, so it was a, an extraordinary trip it was a pilgrimage it was a sacred trip to um, be able to get in touch with myself with my uh, my deepest longings for these next steps in my life um, and the last part of it then I met some very close friends from America and also from Macedonia. Um, and we walked into Santiago together. It was a very, very beautiful experience. I highly recommend it. You told me previously that you don't, didn't have experience in mule riding, but you are a great horseback rider. How did you evolve into this passion? I cannot remember a time in my life when I did not want my own horse. It was the first thing on my birthday list and my Christmas list all of my life when I was a child. I never was able to have my own horse when I was young. And it wasn't until I was in my mid-50s that I was given the horse that I have now. So my horse was truly a gift horse. When I got her, then she was not able to do much at all. She can now canter left and right. And I'm happy to tell you, this week, I taught my horse how to do a particular challenging move called the flying change, where the horse is cantering left. And then in mid-stride, the horse turns and canters right, so or right to left. And I, I taught my horse how to do that. And my horse is not young either. She's 21, and I'm now 67. So that goes to show you, life does not end at 60. There's a whole nother life that we can live if we keep ourselves healthy. And yoga and are you better help? That's so fantastic to hear all this. You've worked in Albania for two years. 
What do you think about our country? I love Albania. It is a wonderful country filled with wonderful people. Some of the, the most beautiful experiences I have had have been in Albania. I would highly recommend anyone going on holiday there. It is truly an extraordinary place. And I feel so fortunate and privileged to have been able to live there for two years. What would you like to tell to young people who have a dream when they are struggling to make it real? What are the top three things they should do? Well, I would um, thank you for your question and rephrase, rephrase it slightly. What I would recommend, <clears throat> excuse me, that anybody do, because I'm not young and I have a dream and I'm launching my, my new dream as well. So the first thing is echoing the words of Winston Churchill, never, never, never give up. Believe in your dream, believe in yourself. Your dreams are gifts for, that, that are very deep inside you. And believe in yourself and believe in your dreams and know that you can achieve them. Number two, write down your vision and write down your goals. I actually created a vision board for myself. And I put the vision board up right in front of my altar where I meditate every day so that I can be reminding myself of what that vision is and what it is that I want to create in this part of my life. And the next one is take one active step towards your goal every single day. It could be just a telephone call. It could be sending a post on your Facebook page. It could be any number of things, but just one small thing to make your dream real and to keep it alive in your heart every single day. Those are my recommendations. Thank you for your pressure advices for all young spirits who want to reach their dreams. <laughs> <laughs> and can you give us a taste of the Albanian food? How was your experience with our culinary? Albania has some of the most delicious food I have ever tasted. Of course, the traditional dishes, birek, um, ferges, tarkosi, those are absolutely delicious, wonderful dishes. But I believe that the fruits and vegetables in Albania are the best that I have ever had anywhere. The cherries, the figs, why would I even want to eat figs from any other part of the world other than Albania? They are so delicious and you actually have two fig growing seasons. Um, the tomatoes are exceptional. Um, it is just a, a plethora of some of the most delicious and healthy food on the planet. And the fresh herbs are amazing. One of my dreams um, with Ayurveda is I will eventually also become a herbologist. And then I want to go to Albania where some of the fresh herbs are grown wild um, and be able to learn and see how some of these herbs are grown and bring those lessons back to Germany. This is a brilliant idea. And I am very happy that you appreciate our food and our culture. But do you have a favorite place in Albania? Oh my goodness, it's hard to know. I think Berat may be one of my favorite places because I just had so many good experiences there. Girokastra is amazing. And of course, Kruje is just a, a fabulous place. Um, on the coast, there are beautiful things as well. Um, your World Heritage Sites, the coast, the beautiful seashore. And again, I would just hope that Albania is able to keep these places pristine and pure and not overrun with um, terrible, huge mega hotels, etc. Keep your country beautiful. Can you talk a bit more about your newest initiative? The Center for the Healing Arts is a women's center for health and healing. We also are deeply committed to the environment. Um, my husband has started an initiative in the community of um, encouraging people to 
take away the green lawns that, with grass that they had carefully cultivated for many years and instead replant those with wildflowers, which attract bumblebees, honeybees, um, insects, and butterflies. So last year, then, he went out with several other people and 10 volunteers in the community agreed to replant their lawns with these wildflower gardens. Franck and I are now creating a meditation garden in our backyard. Um, my most wonderful husband has by hand dug up grass covering that had been growing there for years. And we're about to seed the wildflowers this week, this weekend, we'll be seeding the wildflowers there to even expand more area of our own garden for wildflowers. We're putting up meditation benches there and inviting people to come and have meditation circles with the wildflowers. Oh, I'd love so much to be there and enjoy this experience. Why, what would you tell to a traveler who has no information about Albania? Why he or she should visit Albania? First of all, the history of Albania is so fabulous. Going back to ancient times, some of the most ancient sites in the world are found in Albania and are now World Heritage Sites within the UNESCO. Second, the scenery is spectacular. Everything from the seaside to the mountains and truly pristine, truly untouched, just beautiful, beautiful places. Third, of course, the food that we've spoken about. But fourth, and most importantly, is the people. The Albanian people are wonderful, warm-hearted, kind-hearted, and it is a safe place to travel. It is a beautiful place to travel and a place where you will be welcomed. Thank you, Kate, for this lovely interview. Looking forward to meet you soon again in Albania or in Germany. Stay safe and take care. Thank you so much, Florina. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.